Welcome back to the Sporting Club at the Aventine in San Diego, California. We're here to finish up basketball, defensive skills, but this time we're going from the bottom up. So here we go. We're going to start off with the same concepts. We know that basketball is a sport of constant motion. We know that athletes, typically injuries are occurring at the lower extremities and the knees and the ankles. So we want to help to create that, found or that functional foundation in order for those things to occur less. So we're going to recreate some of the, the positions of a defensive position. We can't, we can't cover the whole sport, it's too complex. So we're gonna pick defense, defensive kind of blocking, look at how the bottom or how the uh, body is situated in space. And like last month, we looked from the top down. So we looked at the shoulder, thoracic spine, and cervical spine. Today, we're gonna look at what's happening from the ground up. So from the ground up, we're gonna look at the applied functional science or the chain reaction biomechanic or biomechanics through the body and how something as simple as a tight calf can impede the athlete's ability to defend a high ball. So let's go ahead and bring Chris in again. He's back. He's a trainer here at the Aventine. Welcome good back. Guys back. Good, good. And uh, we're going to basically do the same thing we did last time is we're going to get him into a position. This time we're going to focus on what's happening from the foot up. So let's take a look at what's going on. So if I'm, you're gonna defend me and I'm coming at this basketball, I'm doing all kinds of head fakes and we, and we say freeze. And we look at him now, wow, look at this. He's really loaded because now I'm going over him. If I just said freeze, I can always go over. So now he's really gonna have to, if I go with an overhead pass, come from a deep squatted position into an overhead reach. And this is going to be difficult because as you come up with the arms, it takes the butt out of the picture. So he's gonna rely more on his ankle dorsiflexors of the calf, as well as the quadriceps, all to keep his knee in a safe position. So as soon as you start to, if you just take your hand and follow my hand here, as soon as we go in all these different directions and you keep focused in on that knee, that right knee, you can see all the different reactions of what's happening there. So we come over here, we come over here. All right, come on up. I know you're getting kind of tired there. So we look at, of course, we saw what the hand can do to drive the body down. Now we have to consider ground reaction force. I don't know how many times when I was a kid playing basketball that they didn't tell us about the clean shoe rule during the shuttle run. So every time I did the shuttle run, I'd end up sliding across the room and my time was always bad. So that really wasn't a test to decide to figure out how quick I was at returning or my agility skills. It was a test of how clean my shoes were that day. So we've got to consider, we've got to consider ground reaction force. As he's defending me, we're gonna talk about what we call quick feet. He's gonna be light on his feet and he's gotta shuffle in all three planes. He may be going forward and back if I'm coming at him. He might be going back. If I'm coming back, he's coming towards me. If I go this way, the frontal plane, and then if I take off by him, or I do one of these tricky moves over here, then he has to react in the transverse plane. So he's gotta go into an external rotation here, an external rotation here. All those things impact what happens from the, from the feet up. Okay, so we've kind of got to look at what's going on. Now what we want to do is come up with, well, we've got the principles. Let me follow up on the principles. We know gravity's doing some things to the body. We know that the ground reaction is affecting the body. We know that his momentum of mass has an effect on the body. We know that this ball right here, which we call a driver or an external driver, is going to have an effect on the body as well. All those things play into this. It's not really just about hitting the weights anymore and doing biceps curls, we as trainers have to consider all these principles because from the principles flow down to our strategies. Now my particular strategy today is to take a look at Chris, see how much ankle dorsiflexion he gets, how much knee motion he gets, how much hip flexion he gets, how, how comfortable he is in that motion. How, if, I'm, if I'm dribbling around him and he starts to get fatigued, and I start to know, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a wild and crazy trainer slash athlete scientist, and I'm thinking, it's all I gotta do is pre-fatigue him in a low position, so if I'm acting like I'm gonna come down here, and I'm just waiting for the lactate to build up in his legs, right, and then I can split off and go into a different direction, then that's a strategy that I can have to beat him at basketball. I don't think I'd have a good shot at that. But regardless, it's to stimulate the action or to simulate the action in order to stimulate the reaction throughout the body. Now with the shuffle feet, my, what I'm looking at is the frontal plane, the sagittal plane, and the transverse plane. How quick can he move his feet if I'm coming over here? And let's just pretend I'm not gonna dribble just so you can hear me better. And I'm coming over here and I'm coming at him 
forward, and he's got to take these little tiny steps, these quick feet, and then I go around him, which he's not going to let me do, but you can see he opens up and goes into external rotation. So we're going to take some exercises on the GTS and put the foot in a closed chain position using the squat stand. We'll put his body in different positions, and some mimic more of the sport themselves. Other are going to give me an isolated look at what's happening from his ankles up. So the first exercise we're going to do is what we call a sprint start. And remember that our first, our, our, one of our primary principles I forgot to mention is it's a reactive sport. So I'm going to create my techniques, which are the exercises on the GTS, based on the strategies of this is a reaction type of training based on the principles that he's reacting to an external driver or where I want to go with the ball. Okay, so we're going to get in what we call a sprint start. Now this is a this is a tricky one. Maybe you didn't see this in your eight hour training, but you're essentially getting into what we call kind of a triped stance where his arms are straight, his wrists are um, around the glide board, and he's got one knee on the glide board as well. Now his foot, you can see, is firmly and securely planted on the, on the squat stand. Now what's important here is that the client, if it's a first time exercise, may need to take a peek down underneath himself to make sure that he lands on this squat stand because we're going to do a plyometric where he's going to be stabilized throughout the trunk, throughout the shoulders, and he's going to just try. I'm going to start with a basic uh, sprint start. So if he just does a little hop, and that's how I would start. Now this seems real basic. We're going to get, we're going to get advanced here, but you can see that this is stimulating a real heavy response in the ankle dorsiflexors the knees, and he's getting a lot of knee extension, which is lengthening the quadriceps, it's lengthening the glute muscles, all to stimulate that deceleration or load and then explode. So I can see, hey, he's got great dorsiflexion in his ankles, there's nothing I'm worried about there. If I see somebody who, if you can just do a slow motion version of, of coming down, if I see someone come down and they can't get their heel down, or their heel's stuck here as he comes down, then wow, there's a limited amount of dorsiflexion at this ankle. That's something I can focus in on and, and either use this exercise or other exercises to go after that muscle, to let that, to get the mobility and the stability all at the same time, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is add the reactive approach. Do you wanna switch legs just so you got a fresh leg for a reaction? Or are you good? I'm good. All right, he's good. He's, so he's, he took his orange juice this morning. All right, so what we're going to do is now add this whole component of reaction. So I'm going to call out while he's in midair whether he lands on his left side, so it's going to be the left side or the right side with this leg. The reason I'm working one leg, well, it's kind of, it's kind of self, uh, it, it proves itself here, but two-legged plyo sprint start probably wouldn't work. You're, you're more than welcome to try it at home. Is we're overloading one extremity because this is a partial weight-bearing setting. So we're going to start with the frontal plane, and I'm going to call out left or right, and for his foot to land left or right. This, while he's in the air, gets a reaction up all the way through the hip and even in the obliques to get that foot to the left or right side of the squat stand. So ready? Three, two, one, jump, right. Three, two, one, jump, left. Three, two, one, jump, right. Jump, left, jump, left, jump, right, jump, right, jump, right, jump, left. Okay, so you see there that I can tweak the reaction, reactive speed by calling out. I can see that he's jumping a little bit higher to get a little bit more reaction time. So I just call out the left or right later in the, in the, in the, in the uh, activity, so as he's airborne. Now we're going to go with this sagittal plane. Now this is a tricky one because you don't have a lot of variation here, but I'm going to focus more on the ball of his foot landing towards the bottom or the top. And I don't want him to deviate more than six inches because we don't have a lot of room for error here. And I want him to make small hops. So just try, first of all, just going back and forth, up and down, that's good, just like that, that's perfect. Just like that, that's what we're looking for. And you know what, just because I'm, I'm thinking right now, and this is how we do, we think on our feet, that this is probably just fine for the sagittal plane. I can see I'm getting a better look at his ankle dorsiflexion, at the way his knee's moving and his hip is moving without having to worry about calling out the reaction. He's going back and forth, and maybe I'll just change the pattern. Let's go back two, then forward two. So there is a reaction, it's just a slower reaction. That's a safety issue. I'm just looking at this right now, and I say, hey, there's not enough surface area for us to be getting all crazy and doing sagittal plane tweaks. Next is the transverse plane. How's that, how's that left leg? Doing good. All right, now we're going to tweak 
internal or external. So he's going to jump up, just do a few internal and external back and forth. And he's going to look back there and see how's that working with my foot. And you can see there's such a huge different reaction throughout the, the ankle, the knee, all the way up into the hip. And you can see all the way up into his thoracic spine, you're getting that top or that bottom up driver that's having an impact on the rest of the body. Powerful, powerful stuff. All right, now I'm going to call out, you want me to call internal or external, those cues you can get? Let's go in and out. How about in and out. All right, let's go down. We'll start in, in, out, out, good, out, good, in, perfect, in. Oh, I got him, I got him. So, so I'm successful now. You can see there that I was really tweaking it down to where he was already had momentum of mass as he's coming down, and I have to get that message into his ear. It goes into his brain, into his central nervous system, out the afferent, the, into the afferent, and out through the efferent, all the way down to the foot to get that reaction throughout the body. So we're tweakers. We're tweakers. We're trainers, and it's our ability. We can we can tweak those things simply by changing when we call out those letters, numbers, or cues. You doing okay? Good. Left foot's trained. Okay, we spent a lot of time on that sprint start. The next one we're going to go into is more of a squat. So we're going to go into, and we'll do bilateral for a few minutes to get your, your right leg caught up. In the squat position, we've got him at level six. I can go all the way up to level eight, depending on what my objective is. If it's more of a strength, then I'm going to go higher, and perhaps I might add some weights with the weight bar, or I can add weights with my hand as well, just, just an external load. Okay, let's go with your right leg this time. Actually, if you just want to do a couple repetitions of squats and get warmed up, that gives me a little time to kind of chat. So we're going to do the same thing with the squat, except we're going to do more reaction because now he can look down and see. So I'm going to really tweak the time with regards to the reaction, but we're going to do the same flow, the same strategy of tweaking it in all three planes. So we're going to do a sagittal, and we're going to do what we call bilateral hopping, which means both legs go up or both feet up and down on the squat stand in the sagittal plane and then we'll do alternating back and forth. Then we'll go to the frontal plane and we'll go bilateral left and right or frontal plane alternating alternating, and then we'll go back and forth. I hope you're paying attention to this. And then we'll go wide stance, narrow stance. And then we'll go internal and external and we'll do the same thing, internal, external or whichever it is on each side, left, right, left, right. And then we might do some crazy stuff like um, opposite side or not or in sync. There's in sync and then there's out of sync. And then there's Justin Timberlake, right? All right, sorry, sorry. I got to go off on some of that stuff sometimes. All right, so we're going to also add in unilateral for all that as well. So let's go ahead and start off with just a bilateral shuffle with narrow feet. And I like to start in that frontal plane because I, I can see you in my mind defending me as I'm coming around that you're shuffling left and shuffling right. So let's start with a little, just a little bilateral hop to the left side and the right side. There you go. Good. Now this, this is real easy stuff. It's only part of his body weight. So I'm going to go right into, let's just do the right leg and do the same thing. And now I want you to focus on kind of the, the quick, how quick can you get your leg back and forth? There you go. Just a little hop because you're basically, you're just doing this back and forth, back and forth on single leg. Good. And if I want to add load, it's going to get away from the speed, but he can jump higher and it'll get a different response throughout the body. Let's go to the left leg now, frontal plane, back and forth. Small little hop, shuttle hops, sh shuffle hops. And now I can just do the same thing. I'm thinking now, I'm thinking, oh, I got some better ideas. Let's go right leg or left leg. You got to, whatever I call out. So let's go left, left. Oh, I tried to get him right, left, right, left, right, left. Kind of looks like river dance. Perfect. All right, now we're going to go in the sagittal plane and we'll go out of sync, kind of hopping back and forth. And that's a tricky one because that bottom foot, you only get your toes on there. So they're, they're trying to hang on to that squat stand. And you can see what I'm doing. We're on a wood floor is I'm blocking the whole GTS with my foot here. So we don't get, we don't end up in a different room in the health club as we're doing these. And now let's go single leg, just back and forth. And if we want to do reaction, I can say forward or up or down. Let's go up, up. Up, down, down, up, down, <laughs> down, down. Good. So then we'll go the other leg and we would do the same thing. 
Now let's just go right into transverse plane. Let's go right into unilateral for this one because I know he's warmed up. You can just take one leg into your chest or just up in the air and we're just going to go internal and external rotation. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then we can do little, little quick ones. Quick ones back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now what I can do here, and this is, this is a powerful tool because the reason this doesn't look fast is because the momentum also wants to go up the rail. So I'm going to take that away and now he's going to get a faster reaction. You see that? And I'm just adding a little bit of resistance with my hand. So now he's getting, and let's go the frontal plane now with that same leg. Back and forth. Good. You see how that has an impact? And then sagittal plane, forward and back. Good. Perfect. Perfect. So that's a real easy tweak to be able to add. Does that, does that feel a little different? Yeah, definitely. Much so we, different. So we got him warmed up without that, then we added kind of an external load and that helps to take away that inertia or that momentum of mass as he goes up. And I, he doesn't just hang up there like Michael Jordan does when he slam dunks, he comes down a little bit faster. I guess I should get with the times, like LeBron James, right? All right, there it is. All right, let's go ahead and turn it to the right. We're going to go into what we call a sideline position. And again, remember our concept is to stimulate the body from the bottom up and yes we call this a, a leg exercise but all this is sending all the proprioceptors are getting stimulated all the way up into the hip into the lumbar spine probably even up into his his facial expression somehow has an impact on this as well so again we've got a limitation here with our frontal plane so all the up and down stuff is going to have to be very limited we won't do the reaction stuff here we'll just do alternating back and forth if you just want to try that because you can see here that there's not a whole lot of space. Good. Now, the reason we have him in a side-lying position is this is going to stimulate more of a response from the AB ductors of the hip. So as you're shuffling back and forth, as you go from one direction to the other, you get a little bit of proprioceptor load, proprioceptive load up and down the lateral abductors of the hip. Now let's go sagittal plane. And we'll go back and forth and you got a lot of room to play here and I'm going to move right in just to show you that we can take away a little bit of the time to come back down. And then we'll go right into external, external rotation and internal rotation, back and forth. And now he's not liking me, he's not liking me because I'm adding a little load, taking away some of that inertia. Very good. Now, if we come back to that squat, there's one other thing that I wanted to mention. If we go back to just a regular squat and you go to even your sprint start, we got to remember what in the heck was the position of the defensive player when we started over here in the corner. And I remember just now that his arms are overhead. So this, with his arms below, is a little bit less close to the actual function. So we could do the whole thing with arms overhead, just like our coaches made us do the whole practice with our arms up in the air to get us in the habit of keeping our arms up. So we could do the, any of those exercises with arms up. Some of the lateral exercises would be a little bit tricky, but it just kind of takes out, it just changes the whole chain reaction stimulation or chain reaction throughout the body Completely, and it feels goofy, right? Stretch on the chest. Feel a little, yeah, you get a little stretch on the chest. Now with the sprint start, I'm gonna have you go back to that sprint start position, and this, is, this has never been tried before. I wanna give this a shot, just kinda, the stuff's coming to me, I wanna share it. Is we're gonna do what we call sprint start, and we can obviously bring both of his arms up, but let's take his right arm up into an overhead reach as he goes into this squat, or whichever is more comfortable, left or right. Let's try the other arm. Let's give it a shot. This is cool. There we go. So now, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Now we can get real tricky. So if you've got an athlete, you can either switch left arm or right arm. You want to go back to that right and see, what that's, see how that's going? I got him on the spot now. This is tough. I, I know what he's going to do after this. He's going to go up in the GTS room and practice. Got it. Okay, he's got it. Good job. Just a tweak. Just another thing to say, hey, if I'm in a th thoracic extension as I'm defending and I need to get my feet moving underneath me as I'm in that extended position, then if I am a functional, foundational exercise artist, so to speak, then I better incorporate that into the move. So with regards to the exercises, we know that we have our principles, ground reaction force, gravity. We have our, uh, our driver here, our external driver, which is our basketball. All these things are made to kind of 
stimulate or simulate the sport in order to stimulate a reaction throughout the body. Now, we know that the first, if you missed out on the first section, we talked about the upper extremities, the hands from the, or the, uh, the impact throughout the body from the hands down. So what impact the hand has on the chain. And this section, again, was talking about the bottom up reactions throughout the body. So I really hope that these sections, this is all, again, defensive skills or defensive reaction type of training. I hope that these things can help create high-level defenders on your basketball teams or help your athletes accommodate or accomplish higher goals, but all to kind of bring it together to train them more functionally using the gravity, using the GTS, using their entire bodies, the whole kinetic chain, and especially an external driver to improve the lives of the athletes and clients that you have. From the top of the key, we take it home. Swish! That's all for now. We'll see you next time on Gravity This Season.